Siddhant and I started a company using only AI agents. We have an AI CEO, we have an AI CPO, we have an AI CTO and a programmer and a programmer and QA tester and everything you can imagine in an actual company. And how much money did it actually cost us to make this product? 0.027 cents. What? Yeah. That is so cheap. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's actually get to building our first product with this entirely AI generated team called ChatDev. Cool. So we can start with GitHub. The best part about this mm -hmm. is completely open source. So you can just go to this GitHub URL mm -hmm. and uh, you can follow the instructions. And this has a very good readme. And because in this chat dev company, they have a documentation department. So they have mentioned that this readme was also written by their documentation agents. Oh, wow. <laughs> Interesting. So we can just like start the steps. So in the quick start section, if you go here, the first step is to clone this repo. Mm -hmm. So let's open our terminal. And I'll clone this. Can you tell exactly what you mean by cloning a repo? Yep. So this is a concept of GitHub and GitHub is basically a collaboration platform where all coders collaborate and uh, you can you can imagine this like uh, YouTube for coders. Like they put their free content out here mm -hmm. and then if somebody wants to use their code base, like just like how you download the video, this is uh, how we clone the code so that we oh, can so run it. Right. So if yeah. I want to make edits and amendments, exactly. I can use in the I can do it in the clone. Exactly. Got it. So once we have cloned it, uh, now it's locally in your system. Yeah. Now it's locally on my system and I can make edits on top of it. I can like write code and I can build stuff on top of this. Got it. So step two is step set up the Python environment. Now, because this repo is built using Python, so you need to set up uh, the Python environment. Now you can think of Python environment is basically uh, a space because like whenever you write a software you need bunch of external tools for example you need apis like open ai and other things and those apis are limited because those are paid apis so you need a password and email to enter your credentials yeah let's start with a uh, second step which so is setting up the python environment setting up the python environment we'll run this command so that is done now we just need to activate the environment okay so we just write contact so right now all we've done is essentially copy paste everything from yeah. this manual yeah and, and we are like following the steps for now now, now we install third party tools yeah now first uh, let's get into the cloned repo so this was the cloned repo i can do ls to see what all things are there so now i can just confirm whatever is built by these guys now i have on my local machine right now let's continue so we now need to install all the third party. So similar to how you do npm install in Python, you do pip install. So okay. npm install is in Node.js. Yeah, npm install in Node.js. We did that in the last video. Yes. Okay, so we have installed all the requirements. Now we need to add our OpenAI key. Okay. Yeah, so we have added the OpenAI key. Now it's time to build our software. The next step is actually writing your command to build a software. Now, okay. what will happen right after this, it, it will print all the logs on your terminal. But because they already have built a GUI, nice GUI. Yeah, with so, the cartoon characters yeah. and all that. So let's make a use of it. And uh, to actually do that, you can watch this video how to do this. I have already done that. So I'll tell you like in short. Okay. So you just need to go to terminal and uh, type this command python3 online log slash app.py. What, what it will do is it will take this file and it will host it on your local machine on this address. So when you go here. Ah, okay. Yeah. Now I get the visualizer. So now you get the visualizer. One thing you need to set up is uh, you have to like add the visualizer file so mm -hmm. that uh, whenever you write something or write a command, it will take those files uh, and visualize it. So the file you need to choose here is once you go to the chat dev directory, mm -hmm. there you have... Uh, company config default and chat chat chain config okay. so this file needs to be uploaded here in okay. order for you to see or visualize everything got it so it automatically detects this uh, and then you're done got so it. you basically go back and now you can actually give it yeah. a task now you can give it a task okay so what what product are we going to build let's try with the game because i feel like uh, gaming companies are uh, very tough in especially because they require like so much detail yeah there's and actually a code component yeah. as well as a visual component exactly exactly so let's try to build a ping pong game oh so the one where you have a paddle on yeah. either sides and there's a ball yeah and you have yeah to try and, save and to be to be honest that is not very simple game it looks very simple because it has the physics involved so whenever right. a ball uh, touches the other 
uh, at the certain angle it has to like reflect back so right. you have to if yeah. you are like coding this you have to calculate all those physics and uh, angles right so let's see how this will perform what's going to be our command so let's first uh, go here uh, copy the template this was a template uh, to run the command okay and we have to this change is, the yeah, task this is uh, so they they already have mentioned this is the description of a task so i'll say create a ping pong game okay and that's uh, it yeah we are not talking to chat gpt this is the company of agents all right so all right leveling up leveling up no no more uh, prompt engineering needed now let's call it pong pong okay pongo let's call it pongo <laughs> yeah right let's run it let's run our company let's can we see. can we see in the visualizer yeah it already started let's see it in the visualizer okay we can see now oh okay so these are like the people in the company talking yeah. yeah so first people or the first person in the company which you interact with is the chief executive officer right what's the ceo's first order of business yeah so this is the guy which you are now talking to and uh, so what he is saying uh, he's actually like uh, introducing you chat dev is a software company powered by multiple intelligent uh, agents like khud ki marketing <laughs> khud ki market <laughs> let me just like zoom in so that you can read all right all right yeah so it's yeah. also introducing like what other agents are there in the company so he said uh, there is chief human resource officer as well wow, chief okay. product officer chief technology officer etc as with a multi agent organization so tell me one thing so these are all autonomous agents who exactly. have their own specialized roles exactly and essentially what they're doing is they perform their specialized roles and once they're done they know who exactly to sort of delegate the next part of the work to exactly and they have people to validate their work as well for example you'll see this in the chat but for example a coder has completed its task so there is a team of testers which can validate what the coder has written right so it's do the both validation and the updation Okay so it's basically giving a command to the CPO saying that yeah. you're the chief product officer we are both working on chat dev we share a common interest in collaborating to successfully complete a task assigned by a new customer so we're the customer here's the customer's task create a ping pong game chat dev has made products in the following before image document powerpoint excel pdf website app dashboard it's like a proper agency yeah okay what's the CPO saying I suggest creating the ping pong game as an application. Okay, so it's taken the first decision as the CPO. Yeah. The CEO seems to agree with the suggestion of the CPO, okay? Yeah, so this is where two two of these agents are talking to each other. Right. Right, like an actual company. Exactly. What is the CPO saying next? To complete the task, I will give you one more instruction as you must help me write a specific solution that approximately solves the requested instructions based on the expertise expertise classic needs. classic cpo okay. line <laughs> <laughs> and then the ceo saying to complete the task you must write the response appropriately so this he is giving the final instructions now okay like, now comes in the cto yeah so cto is saying to complete the task i will give you one or more instructions and you must help me to write a specific solution okay so the cto is probably telling his team yeah. Yeah. So now actually CTO has started creating task for its team. So it's basically made a boilerplate yeah. of what exactly is going to happen. Yeah. So it's and going to be an app and it's going to be in Python. So that's oh. another decision that's yeah. taken. So what do you think of the CTO's choice of Python? I think CTO is biased <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> because it is built using Python so it is What like, what would Oh, oh, oh wow. wow. The this was this was actually Wait, wait is is that testing actually happening? Yeah, I think this was testing. Okay oh. so so basically the ball hit the paddle and it flew out of the window so apparently and you can you can you can see also like okay yeah the file contains all the ball we oh, tested and the testing went well now the documentation team is writing docs just like fo let's follow along with our initial chat okay the cto has started the documentation process now the programmer steps in and writes the first few lines of code it's importing a bunch of libraries uh it's defining the basic stuff over here more lines of code and it's actually deciding the file names and like file structure right so ah uh, okay like the basic nomenclature yeah. and all that and that nice. is like one part with gpt like so here they're uh, defining the width of the canvas yeah. and all and, the and other and stuff and i've just want like uh, uh, i think focus more on this part because this is like one of the most painful part even we have done tutorials in the past yeah. what gpt gives you is like mo almost most of the time different file and then you have to stitch it together it gets like, a lot of the names wrong yeah, and, and it and so you have to just like still execute that part so 
right now it's also executing all these files which they are creating right wow there's a lot of chat happening there's a lot of lines of code being written there is code reviewer now now the code reviewer has stepped in so code reviewer is also like i think uh, saying something what is the code reviewer saying let's hear him out according to the new users task our design product modality languages and ideas are developed first edition source code are listed below okay so we have an alpha product oh we have an alpha product there so it has modality programming language ideas okay uh, and it is mentioning see the code reviewer is actually like commenting on the codes so this was a comment made by the code reviewer the code is missing the import statement from the paddle ball classes right. so this these so just are, like a qa it's yeah. actually doing that and these thing. were the errors which we also used to get a lot of times like because when chat gpt gives you a response in first time most of the time it's buggy right now there is a code reviewer who is like checking checking and validating right so it's actually like making all those comments so it started from the ceo it went on to the cpo cpo gave the task to cto cto is distributing it within his programmer or his or her programmer team programmer wrote the code qa is testing and now there's a back and forth going between qa and the programmers and then programmer made all those changes and fixes he wrote like another version of code and it, he also mentioned at the end ki all reference classes should be import he said ki okay proper yeah, documentation proper documentation he has done now uh, again goes back to the code reviewer yeah code reviewer suggested one more change yeah yeah right the programmer must be so annoying <laughs> but they won't get annoyed because they're ai <laughs> they're ai yeah it's like actually reviewing the code and even imagine like uh, because i review a lot of code like um, in my day to day like work so i know like it's very painful to like read someone else's code and identify small bugs mm. so and it's doing it very well it's like actually like can we go to the other window is something happening there so here everything is done i feel oh yeah so everything is done like uh, the command line actually so basically it built it in 147 seconds oh yeah and there's 153 lines of code and the total number of tokens used was 23000 which was little bit higher than expected but it's not like super high you can actually like this will cost you around uh, somewhere few cents you not even a dollar really yeah so yeah less than less than a dollar we built this game in less than a dollar and we hired a bunch of ai agents to do in that. just 147 seconds that is insane <laughs> that is insane and also like say, it it tells you the cost it's 3 cents it's 3 cent exactly you round it off it's 4 cents it actually like gave you the cost <laughs> oh this is one part i missed actually oh, wow. damn okay let's go back to the chat let's see how it's coming along yeah we're going to skip a bunch of the chat over here because a lot of code reviews and stuff happening i want to see when the ceo or the cpo steps in So we're still with the programmer, there's software test, test en engineer. So there's like an alpha or a beta alpha tester. Yeah, yeah. So reviewer is more like you can say a senior engineer in the team who reviews the code. Right. Software test engineer runs automation and testing pipelines. Got it. The CTO code. is back in the game. The CTO. Let's see what the CTO has to say. According to the codes in the file format listed above, write a requirement dot txt to specify the dependencies of the package required. As a programmer, you should write a requirement dot. Okay. Some feedback to the team. Let's scroll a little more. Okay, so the CEO has come in, and by this time, I think a lot of the product has already been built out because we are nearing the end of the chat. As a ping pong project does not have any external dependencies, the requirement dot txt file can be empty. Here is the contents of the requirements for the whatever file this is. Please note that if the project requires any external libraries or packages, you should list them in the requirements. Blah blah blah. Right, it's giving the instructions. CEO is also like reviewing the code at this point, as the cpo by using markdown you should write a manual dot md file which is a detailed user manual to use the software including introducing main functions of the software how to install environment dependencies and how to use slash play it for example okay wow this is this is actually you oh wow it created a user yeah. manual Damn! It looks like a proper user manual. Yeah. So like these are the things you can actually follow along. What it is saying. So that's the. This is like the final order of business that the CEO actually uh, put out. But well, they have table of content, installation, game controls, game rules, <laughs> all those things they have mentioned. <laughs> all right. So we have the game ready. How can we play it? Game controls. Okay. Thank you for choosing the ping pong game. Enjoy playing. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna go to this warehouse folder, and that is also interesting. So they have named this folder warehouse where their output has been generated. Okay. So this is their like code warehouse default organization. This was our file. Now we have to run main dot py. All right, let's play the game, dude. Oh wow! 
Okay, it, it bounces off. Let me try to save this. The paddle is moving a little slow. Yeah, yeah. I think you lost. You got a point, yeah. Yeah. Nice. That is a game that was built in 137 seconds. What else have they built? Can I see do they have a showcase page? So this is a page where you can see all the projects which Chatdev has made. This is like their company portfolio. Uh-huh. So they have this very simple website. You can see that it's like uh very ugly they also have a flappy bird by the way which works uh, and i i have tried this i can show you it on my local as well okay so i just like ran that this level is too hard i was not <laughs> expecting <laughs> okay let me try yeah let's try again this time it's easy <laughs> i think now you're taking revenge because you lost the last ah! <laughs> i still, still lost it still lost him right wow that is insane the fact that you can build things like this yeah and and not only games they they have a so this is like another gomoku game but they also have calculator uh they have a web game for catching coins awesome. they have a painter which is like interesting let's see how it looks like nice so it's like a paint like a windows paint yeah it's actually like a windows paint you can see this uh, if i open this image in a new tab all right paint so we have this paint like imagine this kind of software which you used to use like which i yeah. personally used to use like on my microsoft now these kind of softwares can be built by mm. this agent company they also have image editor can you believe this like they have fucking image editor <laughs> what can you do you can crop you can resize <laughs> rotate flip brighten oh wow you can yeah. do like all the basic edits yeah. on this yeah nice it's like uh, all the software which you used to is, used to use in 90s i want to see music player they have a music player this some this is something which i haven't seen it feels like windows uh, not windows it feels like that win map yeah you remember that yeah. like 90s player you can you can actually listen to these songs this is like very you can say old fashioned spotify nice so i see there's a lot of these very basic fundamental tools like a timer like a sudoku or something like that yeah. that you can yeah. build and honestly like how how long has it been since this came out this is just a month it's just a month it's old it's just a month yeah wow like just imagine the possibilities like probably a year or two years or even five years down the line it can probably build an entire saas product or exactly. you know an entire tech product like a a swiggy or a zomato or uh your flipkart or something like that in just a matter of minutes or hours yeah and one more cool use case is like right now we have seen only software implementation but you can actually apply this in your marketing as well Okay. like so you can build a marketing company and you can write copies for like certain campaigns and actually the same way we connected tools like linkedin in our previous video we can connect different tools here all your marketing tools and these agents can run your performance marketing and campaigns live so it will run like proper social media campaign exactly exactly analyze the and performance and analyze also like they'll sit on all the com- cam- campaigns wow. real time and they'll make changes based on your wow it'd be really cool if we actually made a video where we automate our 100x instagram page yeah. uh, using this but i think that's going to take a little bit of time yeah but it will be there in next next 6 months i believe will be there right right yeah. very cool tech uh very interesting possibilities and very early stage as well but i really like the whole way that it works like a proper company where there's a proper hierarchy there's a proper team and everybody is working towards this one common goal and one common vision with proper documentation a lot of something that devs are very yeah. <laughs> hesitant to do it's like a proper software manual yes yeah yes awesome i hope you guys like this tutorial and for more ai stuff subscribe to 100x <laughs> <laughs> hit that subscribe button